Hey, and welcome to the Solid Verbal. Now would be a perfect time to consider subscribing. Yeah, that little subscribe button for year-round premium college football content. That's it. Here's the video. Enjoy. Subscribe. Let's talk about the TCU win. Oh, my God. What a weird, crazy, fun game. Weird, crazy, fun. TCU wins by 10, 38-28 over K-State. Adrian Martinez, renaissance man, left the game with an unspecified injury after the first yeah. Kansas State possession. Bummer. Mm. Mm -hmm. Didn't come back in. He was kind of jogging on the sidelines for a moment. It looked like he might, but he he just, I don't know what was wrong. No idea. I think Kleiman his leg, he kind of was favoring. There was no sideline reporter, by the way, in this no. one. I don't know if you saw that. So there were no. the details were non-existent? We had nothing. We had nothing. Yeah. Will Howard got the ball for the balance of the evening, though he was knocked around as well. We got to see Jake Rubley come in and throw a pick mm -hmm. for K-State. Despite all of that, K-State was up 28-10 after a quarter and a half and then just hit a freaking wall, man. They hit a wall. TCU scored 28 unanswered and ended up winning this thing going away. The second straight week for TCU, I want to focus on TCU for a second, where they rally from behind. They beat a ranked opponent. It's their fourth consecutive win over a ranked opponent this season. The three-headed monster of Max Duggan, of Kendra Miller, Quentin Johnston. Again, they step up in prime time to get the job done. Max Duggan in particular is really having a great season now under Sonny Dykes. 19 to 1 touchdown to interception ratio. He's running the football the way he always has, but he's doing so, I think, it, just in a smarter fashion, picking his spots more than he did under the previous offense. There is a conversation to be had, and you and I had it this morning on Slack mm -hmm. with respect to TCU going 12 and 0. Sure. We can have that discussion, but we need <laughs> to talk about K State first and the way that this game went for them. Let's. All right. You tweeted or. I guess he didn't tweet. You sent me a message at some point saying it's just really embarrassing to lose to to be losing to a Will Howard led Kansas State team now. And as it turns out, in retrospect, they didn't lose, but they were losing for a hot minute. I was going to say, as it turns out, though, Will Howard was really good. Yeah, <laughs> this, was not, was. this was not your father's Will Howard because it feels like he's been the backup quarterback in Manhattan, Kansas for quite some time. Uh, as it turns out, he was not the problem. He made no. plays and was very good. Yeah. What, you, do you want the rest of my thoughts on this game? I, I want know the if rest of your K-State thoughts because there was a groan when I introduced this game. Yeah, no, wild game. K-State goes up, super impressive with Will Howard. He's making plays with his legs. He's making plays with his arms. Uh, the receivers are doing well. Deuce Vaughn is getting loose. Like, you could even hear because the game was, it was in Fort Worth, was it not? Correct. You could hear on longer Deuce Vaughn plays that K-State traveled well enough that you heard the Deuce coming in from the the other purple team in Amon G. Carter. So K-State, by and large, in that first half, did plenty to pace themselves to win this game, even with Will Howard. I think the defense made plays. They were confusing Max Duggan enough. Um, they were staying in front of the TCU offense enough. But they go up 28-10, and things slow down. And I look yeah. at that. I think they had fourth and two from the TCU. Maybe it was in the third quarter. Fourth and two from the TCU 26. I think it was at that point that Will Howard got hurt. Um, on that drive, and they made the decision to kick it, and I think they missed that kick. Yep. And the same thing applies for UCLA and Oregon. You're not winning in Austin against this Oregon offense with field goals. You are not beating this year's iteration of the Frogs with field goals in the red zone-ish on fourth and short. I don't care if it's obvious that you're giving it to Deuce Vaughn. I don't care if it's obvious that you're going for it and maybe running it. Whatever the case is, you have to be prepared in those situations to put your foot on the accelerator, and keep going. And so when you slowed things down, and again, it might have been a Jake Rubley moment. They might not have trusted him on fourth and two in that kind of high leverage situation. Totally understandable. But it's those tiny moments, which are turn out to be huge, that affect winning and losing. And so to me, that gives TCU confidence. You know, the missed field goal, they get the stop, there's juice in the stadium, and then you're finding Quinton Johnston, and then Max Duggan's extending plays, and then they're, you know, Kendra Miller is getting loose. And like, TCU, clearly the better team. It would have been nice to see them win this game against a healthy Adrian Martinez, just to sort of get a gauge for where the Frogs are at and coming back. But that, to me, was the disappointing thing, that Kansas State had enough to win this game. And the guttier yeah. team, the team willing to adjust and take chances and be more aggressive was the team that's undefeated. 
And yep. there's a reason the way for that. It's so the way it goes. So look, TCU right now is 7-0. and Yeah. They have five remaining games. Here's what they've got. Okay. At West Virginia, home against Texas Tech, back-to-back road games at Texas and at Baylor, and then they close out the year coming back home against Iowa State. Yeah. Am I crazy for saying it's completely plausible and or doable that TCU could finish 12-0? and No, you're not crazy. There are those, there's a reason they went down the way they went down, that they're not a perfect team. They're not a perfect team. You're not crazy. And also, you use the term conversation, and I sort of mentioned it with Bo Nix in the conversation about his place in the quarterback groupings across the country. Is Max Duggan the best Big 12 quarterback? I mean, the best of Dylan Gabriel is very impressive. The best of Blake Shapin is very impressive. Um, the best of Quinn Ewers, when he's not throwing three interceptions on the road, is quite impressive. But the best of is not how we determine a conversation like this and where it goes. Max Duggan has been essentially bulletproof for an undefeated to top 10 team with a first year coach. 19 to 1 touchdown to interception ratio. Yeah. He's been really good. He's been really good. So, look, I'm, I'm not getting back together with TCU, not now, not ever, but. I mean, but, that would be the time. They lost but, all the weight. They have a glow to them. No, time. no, no, no. Listen. They're doing the second, Pilates. The second I go public with this, that's the second they lose, and I don't want to jinx it. Had a lot of TCU people saying, hey, what's going on oh with you? Oh, God. No. So are you meeting TCU at an airport courtyard by Marriott? Is that what you're telling me on the sly? <laughs> We're negotiating, yeah. Okay. I, I still don't fully trust a complete TCU. Like, to go 12-0 and 0 is it it indicates something special uh at every point of the field at every point of the game you're going to need luck to go 12 and 0 at a certain point maybe that yesterday was that maybe the Oklahoma State game was that i don't know but i, I don't i don't see them as a team as a bulletproof team 